Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Brian and in this video we're going to talk about a complex but yet common problem and a simple solution. So the problem first off is, well, sharing information or specifically resources between threads, meaning you have multiple threads in your application and one or more of them is trying to update that at the same time. So you have this thread and this thread trying to update this resource. And let's just call this an integer. So let's say this thread is going to minus one and this thread is going to add one. Seems simple enough until you think about how a computer works. What if both of these hit at the same time? Well, in your mind, you would say, well, they'd negate each other, right? So minus one plus one, it would just, there'd be no change. That's not really how a computer works. Usually what happens is the computer gets very confused and, well, does some goofy number like this, or more appropriately, I'm sure you've seen this before. That being said, a lot of people will try to solve this in a number of different ways, but we're going to show you the, probably the best way of doing this. I don't like this design, but this is what people tend to do. They go, okay, I know what we're going to do. We're going to use a thread pool, and we're going to pull these threads from the thread pool. But look what we're doing. We're not actually solving the problem. We still have the same thing, just now we have a thread pool. I do cover this problem and the solution in depth in my course, QT6 Core Advanced for C++, available out on udemy.com. Be sure to check it out. Now let's take a look at the actual solution to this. So how do we solve this? Looking at this problem, we have a pool with multiple threads and we want to update this value, or I should say this variable. This shared resource unfortunately needs something in between. So just having these threads hit it directly is a lot like having a stoplight that is not lit. And as you can guess, bad things usually happen. So we need to put something between these. So let's go ahead and grab this and we're going to use what's called a mutex or specifically in cute terms, it's a Q mutex. We're going to use a Q mutex locker. And what this does is it acts as a stoplight between the threads trying to update this variable. That way they know whether, well, just to illustrate the point, they can go or they have to wait. And basically it makes them go one at a time. This sounds counterintuitive because you're going to think, well, wait a minute, I thought the point of multiple threads was to be able to do multiple things at once. That is true. Unfortunately, if you try to update the shared resource multiple times at the same time, you're going to get corrupt data. So you need this stoplight, if you will, to kind of act as like a gatekeeper to determine which thread can actually update this. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we would implement this. Because we're going to be working with a thread pool, we need to implement a runnable. So let's go ahead and make a new class. I'm going to say add new class and let's call this worker. And this is where a lot of people are going to get really feisty down in the comments. I'm going to make this a base class of Q object, but you don't need to. I'm just doing this so in the future, not this video, if I wanted to work with signals and slots, I already have Q object and all its goodness baked right in. Now, the reason why we're not going to be working with signals and slots is because, well, signals and slots are going to do one of two things. Either you're going to make a copy, which defeats the point of this video, meaning you would make a copy of that value, which doesn't help because it's not a shared resource, or you would share a pointer using signals and slots, which puts you right back to the problem statement we had at the very beginning, where you still have two objects, or I should say two or more objects, trying to update the same thing at the same time. All right. So... We're going to put some includes in here. We've talked about these before, thread and runnable. We need to implement a runnable to run on the thread pool. So I'm going to say public, q runnable. And then I'm going to right click this, refractor, and then insert virtual functions of base class. And we're going to go to run. We've done this before, so I'm kind of whipping right through this. And that's going to implement our q runnable interface, allowing us to run on a thread pool. Now we're going to start talking about mutex and mutex locker, and let me explain. So we're going to say private, and we want our shared resource. And this is going to be a pointer to some variable. So we're going to say mcount. And then we need our mutex, which is also going to be a pointer. So 
what a mutex does is it acts like that stop light and it's going to tell the thread, hey, can you use it or do you have to sit and wait your turn? Kind of serializes everything. And if we just highlight QMutex and hit F1, it takes us to the mutex class. And you can see down here we have lock, try lock, and unlock. So really what this thing does, it will lock the shared resource and say the thread and only this thread can update it and then unlock it, allowing other threads to go through. And you can go down here and read all about it. It's actually a fairly simple little class and it's fairly elegant. The problem is you have to remember to unlock, otherwise all your threads will just sit and wait. And here's an example. You'll have a function, you'll say mutex lock, do something, mutex unlock. But if you forget to do that, you're, well, you're in a bad place, which is why mutex locker exists. And the mutex locker is just simply a convenience class that simplifies locking and unlocking. And there's a little example here. Same thing I just said, mutex lock and unlock, or you can simplify this by saying mutex locker. And then when this goes out of scope, it automatically unlocks. Whew. Think of that like a smart pointer, but for mutexes. And we're gonna cover that here in just a second. So we're going to make setters for these. I'm gonna generate a setter. In case I went a little too fast there, we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna say our mutex. We're just going to mouse over it, right click, refractor, and you can generate a setter. Puts that code in there for us. So before we go to run in our code that we haven't implemented yet in main, we're going to need to set those. So in here is our problem statement, run. The thread pool is going to run this code on a thread. We don't get to pick and choose that thread, it's just going to do it for us. Now this can be, well, a little bit dangerous, right? Now what I want to do here is say for, and we're just going to make some simple, simple code. I'm going to say for int i equals zero, i is less than 10, and i, go ahead and increment. Again, this is going to be very, very simple code. This is the problem, and I want you to pay attention. Remember, we're running on a thread. So int value equals, and we're going to dereference that pointer. And this is where people in the comments are going to say, well, you shouldn't do it this way. You should do it that way. I'm keeping this ridiculously simple so that even a C++ newbie can figure this out. So what are we doing here? Well, we're making an integer called value, and we're saying it's going to equal whatever the value is at that location that's being pointed to. So we're dereferencing that, putting it in there, and then we're going to increment. Now here comes the problem. The problem is if we go ahead and say, okay, let's go back to that pointer and set it to our updated value. And I'm gonna put it right there, danger, because we are now modifying something at a memory location and other threads could be doing this at the same time. That is very bad. It's very dangerous and, well, I'm sure you've seen applications crash before. And just for giggles, I'm gonna go ahead and say qinfo, qthread, current thread, and then we're going to just print out that value, just so we can see it. But I also wanna know when this thread is done. All right, now how do we fix this? We've talked about mutex and mutex locker. So you're inclined to go in and use a mutex, which we already have down here via our setter and use it. And you can, you can absolutely do this. You can say something like mutex.lock. The problem is when you do this and you forget to unlock, meaning it's going to just stop and none of the other threads are going to be able to access anything beyond this point. So that's bad, we don't wanna do that. So instead, we're going to use a Q mutex locker, the convenience class, and we're going to call this locker. Thank you, cute creator for helping me type locker. <laughs> there we go. I'm sure that's happened to everybody. And we're gonna give it our mutex. So what happens now is it's going to lock. And then when it goes out of scope, it's going to magically unlock for us. The key here is scope. Pay attention to scope. 
So when does this actually go out of scope? Well, we've created it in this for loop, so every iteration of this loop, it's going to go out of scope. You could move this up here if you wanted to, but there's really no need. Usually when you lock something, you want to keep it locked for the shortest amount of time as possible. That way other threads can go in there and access it. So basically, we're going to lock and unlock this every time this for loop goes through on every single thread. Again, there'll probably be a huge debate down in the comments. Flipping back to our main file, we're gonna go ahead and implement all of this stuff that we've written so far. So let's just go ahead and we're gonna use QThread, QThread pool, QMutex, QDebug, and our worker class that we just created. Remember, quick recap, basically we need to set our shared resource and the mutex we're gonna use as our stoplight for this worker to work while it's running. All right, so first things first here, let's go ahead and let's say int count. And we're going to make this zero right up front. This is our shared resource. And let's go ahead and set uh, int max equals five. Actually, let's just make it one for now. Now, this is the number of threads that we're going to use. Remember the way a thread pool works. If you make like a thousand threads, it's not going to run a thousand threads at once. It's going to recycle threads as they're available. You're using a pool of threads. So if you put that to some astronomical number, don't expect it to run, you know, every single thing in the known universe. So we're going to say QMutex, and this is where we're going to make our stoplight. And this is going to tell the threads when they can and when they cannot update this shared resource. And I should actually put this right here. Shared resource, just so there's no confusion what that is. All right, now... Let's go ahead and say four, I'm gonna say int i equals zero, and we'll say i is less than max. Go ahead and increment i, not a big deal. And we'll say worker. And we're gonna make a new worker. Now you may be saying, uh-oh, you have the new keyword, and of course it's popping up telling me, uh-oh, you're going to have memory leaks and all sorts of issues. Remember, with Qt, we have built-in memory management. I would not set a parent because we're working with multiple threads. So instead, what you're going to do is say worker.setAutoDelete. Set that to true, and the thread pool will delete that for us when it no longer needs it. But remember, in our worker, we have those other setters. So I'm going to say worker set, and this is why naming is so important. We got set out set mutex. If we had named that something else, we'd have to go hunting for it. So let's go ahead and set our shared resource. And we're going to set our mutex, which our Q mutex locker is going to work with under the hood. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to wait for all of this stuff to be done. But first off, we need to actually run this. Silly me. So we're going to say QThread pool. Let's go ahead and fire off this on the global instance. We covered this in the previous video in case you're going to wait, what is he doing? Basically, we're taking that instance of the Q runnable, putting it out on the global instance of our current thread pool and say, run that. And spoiler alert, just in case you did skip the last video, what it's going to do at this point, it's going to put it inside an internal queue inside the thread pool. And when it's ready to run, it's going to run this run function that we implemented from the queue runnable interface. All right, almost done. Basically, what we're going to do now is we are going to wait for all of this to get done. We're going to throw a bunch of stuff out in the pool. And I'm just going to say, you know what? I want to wait for everything to be completed. And then I'm going to say queue info count because we want to know exactly what's going on here. And let's just print out our shared resource. Now this code is very, very simple. So when we get to this point right here, looking at this, all we're doing is we're saying, go ahead and increment it 10 times, zero to 10, every time we run. So each thread basically is going to increment that by 10. Very, very simple code.
Okay, quick recap before we continue. We have a thread pool with multiple threads that we do not directly control. Qt controls these based off your computer settings. And each one of these threads is going to be trying to update a shared resource. Now this can cause all sorts of issues, but we have a mutex or more properly a qmutex in between them that acts as a stoplight telling each thread when they can or cannot update that shared resource. All right, let's take a look at the code here. First example, we're just gonna have one thread just to show you what it looks like when there's no contention here. It's gonna be very simple. Yep, boom, thread runs and it's going to increment it by 10. So every time the thread runs, it's going to increment it by 10. Let's go ahead and do five. Should have absolutely no problems. So what's going on here is this thing's going incredibly fast, but every time it goes through it, it's going to lock this and then unlock it when it goes out of scope. Now you can, if you wanted to, do this manually using a Q mutex. We already have that in here. So let's say mutex.lock. And this is going to block our current thread until it can lock. So you gotta be kind of careful there. And then you can unlock that guy. Now this is gonna act slightly different on everybody else's computers. So just kind of keep that in the back of your head that operating systems do vary. So don't expect it to behave exactly like this. But the major takeaway here is because you have this mutex or this stop light here, you are not going to run into any sort of crashes or issues. I tend to favor QMutex Locker. That way I can just set it and forget it. I don't have to remember to unlock it. Now let's take this example and just kind of make it ridiculous. I'm going to say 5,000 threads. This computer, there's no way in heck it could do 5,000 continuous threads. I mean, let's just go to system info. You can see I'm on a very, very small virtual machine. And if I just go to our system monitor, you can see I only have one, two, three, four virtual CPUs. So this thing's not going to be able to run 5,000 threads concurrently. It's just not going to happen. So this is the beauty of the thread pool. You can do this and it'll queue things up. And as those threads in the thread pool become available, it will synchronize them, run them, and everything just works. So the end result is it runs, it runs multi-threaded, it runs pooled, and it does not crash, and we can have a shared resource. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find the source code out on github.com. If you need additional help, myself and thousands of other developers are hanging out in the Void Realms Facebook group. This is a large group with lots of developers and we talk about everything technology related, not just the technology that you just watched. And if you want official training, I do develop courses out on udemy.com. This is official classroom style training. If you go out there and the course you're looking for is just simply not there, drop me a note. I'm either working on it or I will actually develop it. I will put a link down below for all three of those. And as always, help me help you. Smash that like and subscribe button. The more popular these videos become, the more I'll create and publish out on YouTube. Thank you for watching.